For some, it is the absolute highlight and for the others, a nightmare, the fact-finding report and especially the writing process. Being aware of some p typical pitfalls is crucial for all stakeholders. And as always, they have different perspectives and positions to look at it. For an investigator, it is the final product. Whether you are an investigator or recipient of that report, the discussed pitfalls in this episode will sharpen your view when it comes to the quality of a fact-finding report. Great to have you here. Corporate integrity, fraud, non-compliance and cybersecurity. Would you like to understand the root causes, detect threats and take measurements to protect the most precious assets? As a leader, you need to be prepared and stay actionable in the event of an incident. Sonia Sternemann talks in her podcast, The Human Factor. Corporate integrity matters. To leaders and entrepreneurs who want to have impact, foster corporate integrity, and act as role models. As an international expert for corporate governance and integrity, entrepreneur, and independent board member, she knows the challenges. Let her inspire you. Welcome back to this new episode of the podcast, The Human Factor, Corporate Integrity Matters. You might be an investigator, a board member, a corporate integrity council, or on your way there. I'm your mentor and sparring partner when it comes to corporate integrity with impact, founder of Corporate Integrity Concepts with the Corporate Integrity Academy. And I have the vision to protect and secure assets, reputation and actionability, yours and the one of your organization. Why? Because corporate integrity matters to all of us. Being aware of the common pitfalls when it comes to the report writing process is just an one part of effective investigations. Sure, we all think it never happens to us that we need such a fact-finding report, but acting with foresight also means to be prepared and understanding the key elements for success. In today's episode, the fact-finding report is under investigation. When an organization is in a position that they need a fact-finding report, they are already in an extraordinary position. Having then already heard about it before and knowing what to be expected is highly important. Otherwise, they cannot act with professional skepticism and judgment. Most of the time, executives and board members do not yet have huge experience in that field of expertise. From the perspective of an investigator, the report is important too. I already mentioned that at the very beginning. It is the final product. It reflects the work performed. It summarizes the findings and the facts. I do not have to tell you that the perception of the entire investigation is mainly impacted by the final fact-finding report, which is handed in at the end. Report writing is an evergreen and for me the key element. The reasons I already explained before. And when it comes to the recruiting process and our firm, we strongly focus on the mindset and professional skills Of the report writing. The experiences and the skills are important and here I really focus on the experience. Often the necessary skills are underestimated and candidates think and behave like that, that who can write can also write a fact-finding report. That's not the truth. That's hardly the case. Maybe there are some natural talents around but With experience of more than 25 years in that field, I know how hard it is to find these people with that skill set. And if you are conducting investigations and hiring in that field of expertise, I'm pretty sure that report writing is on your radar too. Therefore, the distracting belief that everybody can write a fact-finding report puts the success of an investigation at risk. Whether you are hiring professionals, internal teams or external teams to conduct an internal investigation or hiring for your own investigation team, being aware that report writing is a special skill will help you to conduct successful investigations. Being reflected 
in the final investigation report. The interest to bring in the right professional skills comes from different perspectives and shareholders. And of course, stakeholders here, the board members, executive and non-executive ones. Imagine all the audit and risk committees which need to rely on the fact-finding report presented. The management team, of course, also the internal audit team, the investigators, last but not least, the shareholder as such. And as an active listener, you know, I care about the assets and therefore about the shareholders and stakeholders. For the ones playing golf, we all know how it feels when you need too many pots after having reached the green with just one stroke. We gave up the potential to succeed. Same when you investigated over weeks, months or years. And at the end, your report sucks. Let us now talk about the pitfalls and how to avoid these. You can imagine the reaction of the individual team members when the subject of report writing is already taken up during the planning and strategy phase. Depending on the perspective investigation team has, this early focus on the product triggers question marks and sometimes fear. However, my experience over the last past 25 years has shown me that it is never too early to put the report onto the agenda. The practices are different, I know. And already the first of your pitfall, the timing. The sooner a high-level outline of the report is drafted, the better we can achieve the expectations and fine-tune during the entire process. When I talk about expectations, I think about the ones I have as a strategic investigator, but also the expectations the recipients have. All the recipients I can think of, and not only the direct client asking for it. And that leads me to the next potential pitfall, understanding the circle of recipients. Who are the ones who will work with that report afterwards? What are their needs? What do I not yet know and how important would that be for the investigation as such, but also for the report? Managing the expectation gap is not a new topic, nor does it only relate to investigations or audits or reports. No. It is relevant for every relationship. I'm not going into the details of scoping in this episode. That's not a part of the investigation. I'm highlighting separately. But it is important that the expectation of the report is part of the scoping and the scope defined is reflected in the report. Addressing enough time and expertise on scoping the investigation is an additional key success factor, or if not seriously done, a pitfall. So the scope should definitely be on your checklist when you outline the report pro reporting process. How that could look like is part of our masterclass and mentoring sessions within the academy. But how does, it, does that report look like? What is the structure? What needs to be included? And what am I doing with references? And in which format should all that be delivered? That's the structural part. And by the way, are the, ev are the evidences directly referenced and linked in the file the recipients receive? And is it possible to have it also without the linked evidence? You see what I mean here. A lot of questions. You never heard about um, these questions? At what stage of the investigation were these asked? I assume that it was rather later than sooner, correct? And sometimes they are just coming too late to make the process still efficient and effective. And you have to redo your work and spend additional time on it. And as often, investigation reports are time sensitive. So that also, that's also my experience, which is okay. It is the responsibility of the investigation lead to come up with it, with all these questions in a set to talk about as soon as possible and in a very early stage of the investigation strategy. Now, depending on the position you hold on 
you can think of when you bring it up next time and reflect on when did your investigators ask you about your needs, for example, if you are the ones who ask for the investigation. If you are a board member and mandated to perform an investigation, become clear on your needs first before you, to, um, before you start with discussion. Either within the board only or together with the investigators. That's all possible. And if you need support, just ask investigators about their experience and their tools they are going to use. I suggest brainstorming also with investigators to learn about the latest technology and possibilities. It will also influence the report and can add value you wouldn't have expected so far. My personal conclusion and opinion about writing professional fact-finding report is transparent. And I am a big fan of not using too many pots on the green, destroying the great strokes before. Same for the report. Bring it home and be proud of it. There isn't a better compliment from the recipients than praising your delivery, your report. And also the recipients will highly appreciate a great report as they have to further work with it. The fact-finding report is often not the end of the process as measurements will be implemented based on the results provided in the report. With the different pitfalls or professionally done success factors, we investigated in this episode you will be prepared. Of course, you need to have the right team and constantly invest in education. As a take-home or take-to-the-office assignment, I would like to give you the following reflection. Do we have covered the following topics when we mandate or conduct an investigation? First, timing, the recipients, scoping and the structure. I know, it is better to bring up only three points, as it is said that humans are not capable to remember more, but having you as listeners, I'm sure these four key elements are not too much. The T-R-S-S of timing, recipients, scoping and structure. This was the episode number 26 of the Human Factor Corporate Integrity Matters. Following the motto, Corporate Integrity Secures and Empowers Individuals and Organizations. Would you like to learn more, meet peers and getting qualified? So visit the website Corporate Integrity Concepts or Corporate Integrity Academy. Or do you think this podcast could be interesting for someone you know? Sharing is caring and we are always happy to welcome your peers to our community. And if you like this episode, subscribe and don't miss any of the future ones. The show notes are, of course, enriched with relevant information and your connection via any of the social media channels is highly appreciated and will be answered. Promised. And please do not forget, topics of your interest or interview partners are highly welcome. Just send me a note on any of the channels you know. That's it from my side. I thank you for listening. My name is Sonja Stiernimon and I'm your host. Stay curious, actionable and a role model. Take care and goodbye.